That's awesome. He's got a four wheeler and a stand on. So this is your third prototype? This is the third prototype that we've been doing. All right, so have you, have you made any changes and improvements while you've been doing Yeah, this? we have made some improvements. Uh, the, the very first one that we made, um, it didn't have uh, the angle that we wanted on the dovetail, so we've okay. extended the dovetail. Ah, so a live bit. and learn. Live and learn, you guys. I love it, because... Uh, the, the way it's designed now, basically, even if you're on a slope down or up, it, it's still going to be a, a good good angle. I see these guys, Wyatt, and I don't know how they do it. Honestly, I have no clue. But they literally put their four-wheelers on top of the deck of the right. thing. I flipped loads multiple times. Not bragging, because that doesn't take skill. It takes no skill to flip a load off. I've had skid steers fly off. I had a 36,000-pound excavator snap a trailer hitch and land upside down on a road. I wouldn't want to haul, haul a four-wheeler up on top. So ten and a half foot flat. Yes, and then a two foot dovetail. Two foot dovetail. And you got so a five let, and a half foot ramp. Let me talk about this real quick. So from this point where the rear wheels are, now he's got his four-wheeler and a stand-on loaded in it. From where the rear wheels are, that's ten and a half foot to the back of the cab. Now this is not technically space that you would probably want to park a four-wheeler or a trailer on but it's awesome space to put fuel cans or right. lighter material that you need, but you have storage built in above it as well. Sure. Sure. I mean, you've, you've optimized every square inch of this thing. If you do want to um, pull a trailer, that is possible with this setup. A lot of people think that that's eliminated, but um, there's a product out there. It's called the uh, the Super Trust Hitch, okay. um, and it actually it'll extend. It's made for for this situation with people that have um, campers or um, luggage racks on the on the back of their vehicle. Yep. So it'll actually extend uh, for even up to five foot out from your hitch. Can you show me actually how you've done yeah. supported so, that that two foot so, overhang in the dovetail? So basically. Um, the way this installs is pretty simple. There's, there's the first thing you have to do is put your uh, support piece in your in your hitch. Now, this one is a solid state, and once you have this in, now this is not welded up to the rack. This is just a support piece here. Okay. So um, once this is in, then you just set your rack down on top. We've installed two lift points on the rack that are centered in the middle of the load, so you can hook up. Uh, you know, a chain, a, a little gantry crane, uh, gantry hoist. Okay. You can load it with, you know, six, eight guys um, if you have that available. We use a skid loader personally. Um, and then all you have to do for your wiring is just plug in your standard four-way flat uh, wiring into your into your trailer wiring. So these are uh, barrel hinges. Um, they're four-inch barrel hinges, so they are greasable. They have grease fittings. Okay. They're grease fittings on either end. Um, so there, there's our greasable so. Is greasable the same as greasable? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know um, I got to get those in. Once you have your, your support piece in the hitch, um, there's the two lift points. There's one on the other side. Okay. And the way it works is we actually um, set this down um, in with either a skid loader. You can use manpower if you have enough guys. It weighs about 450 pounds total. So the empty um, weight is 450. Right. And we, so we don't actually have a structure inside the frame of the truck Correct. itself. So once it, once you you go in the the stake pockets, there's bolts that are welded. You just put in four bolts. Okay. To, to secure it into the stake pockets, and um, like I say, this is specifically made for this this truck. Um, the ones that we're going to be shipping out are a modular design. There's going to be two side pieces, two pieces for the front. Um, rack and then uh, two pieces for the floor back here in the ramp. It's all going to bolt together and it's going to be adjustable to fit okay. all years, makes and models of domestic eight foot bed trucks. Okay, that makes sense. And then you have this one outfitted with what, what is green, these are the Green Touch um, okay. Pro Series uh, racks. They don't um, come with this, though. They, guys, they're not, yeah, they're not included sure. in the setup, but it's something that you guys can add and. Um, it, it makes you stand out too because uh, well it doesn't make a difference what brand you use whether it's green touch or equipment defender or sure. jungle gym or something like that i seen i, I don't know i don't i don't know i just use an off-brand one um 
but you, it's mo this is modular enough where if these, okay, so I'm gonna guess though, Wyatt, mm -hmm. I'm gonna guess that you would, if you're gonna add your own racks, would have to drill your own holes yes. to, to install your yeah. racks, okay? Correct, that's correct. Okay, so that's what you did That's here. what you'd have to do on any trailer. Okay, yeah. okay, I just want these guys to know that if they buy this setup and they're going, hey, how come my, this is the way I talk, how come my thing doesn't fit on my, how come my racks don't fit on my ramp rack? Well, you gotta actually do a little bit of modification on your own, okay? Um, so that would involve just drilling through, Correct. and then you can put your own bolts in place, right? Yeah. Uh, but you, this does, this setup, is this standard on all of them? It is, it's standard, and um, basically, you know, most, uh, this is raised uh, expanded metal, number nine, three quarter inch expanded metal. Yeah. What I want you guys to look at is, this is a pretty decent load on this truck at this point. And the truck actually looks like it's riding pretty good. And this is an F-250. That's, that's stock suspension. Um, the one that we use every day, we did um, replace the, the rear springs to just beef it up a little bit. Wyatt said something that I'm, I wanted to bring to your attention because he said his F-350 dually wasn't ready. And so he had his F-250, three quarter ton pickup truck ready. And I thought that's actually good because I don't want guys thinking that they need an F-350, a dually, they can actually get by with a single axle F-250, but... The, yeah, the one we actually use in the field is an F-250, just the same as this truck. So it's exactly the same as this truck. Um, I'll take that back. Thank you, yep. Kylie. Appreciate that. She did a good job, didn't she, guys? Try my best. Most three-quarter ton and up trucks, you can leave completely stocked depending on what load you're hauling in. So I want you guys to look at this load, right? So he's got his mower up front, then he's got his four-wheeler in the back, the engine to the four-wheeler, so it's a little bit back heavy. Then plus you got the trailer on it, but the truck is actually handling it. And Wyatt just literally drove almost 600, 700 miles with this just to get here today. So it obviously must be able to handle it pretty decent. This wasn't around the corner for him. And um, you know, obviously most bungees, um, most ratchet straps, you can fit right in there so you can secure whatever you're, whatever yeah. you're putting up there, gas cans. We've actually made this 24 inches wide. And the thought behind that was, um, obviously as you guys know, you can't necessarily fit a, a ride on mower in every yard. So we throw a push mower up there. <laughs> just in case um a 21 inch push mower will fit fit perfect up there i love the thought you put so, into this um, thing man i mean this is what made i'm it's gonna sound corny this is what made america i mean honestly guys that seen a vision then built that vision and then took that vision to the next level and kept improving it and modifying it and obviously this guy works in the industry otherwise he wouldn't know how to build all these little little nuances into it so that you were trying to make your own life easier weren't you um, we wanted to close down our route density yep. and a lot a lot of that has to do with you know catching the neighbor's eyes as they're coming home or leaving to go to work mm -hmm. and um, this you know we, we couldn't really afford to you know um, take the bed off of a off of a truck that we might use for other purposes mm -hmm. and um, install a five ten thousand dollar flat bed just specifically for that purpose so we thought what is something that we can that we can build that can still haul our equipment but we can still have multi-purpose trucks take it out in the winter time put a salt box on it um, or if, if if the truck a lot of our equipment was older and still is um, so if the truck breaks down we can take this off put it on another truck in literally 10 15 minutes um, so there's no downtime. So you can take this off this truck in 10 to 15 minutes. Then throw it on another another truck. So that's really cool. That's awesome. So th we use this truck for, for hauling a bunch of different stuff. So we didn't, um, the way we, we just have it strapped down with um, straps right now, but in the in the field, what we like to use are the, um, they're, they're from Green Touch. They're, they're wheel straps, so basically they're, they're kind of like wheel chocks, and you drive right up on them with the mowers, and it makes strapping a lot easier, so you don't have to... to okay, I see you have straps. this actually strapped to the rack itself. That's I don't correct. know if that's an approved tie-down system. I'm saying I don't know. Right, that sure. would be more of a DLT thing, I think. Sure. But sure. you know what? In the comments down below, you guys will probably know, some of you guys probably know a heck of a lot about that stuff, so you tell me, can you, is that actually okay? Huh? And it, 
and it depends on sometimes it's specific states DOT yeah you know and yep. local laws and regulations but um, in Maryland where we're at anything um, under 10,000 pounds um, does not require a DOT number um, so this he, he this, beat me to the punch yeah, I was gonna so. ask you about that so you don't need a DOT number for this truck not for this setup no, no because this so. is an f-250 rated to 9,001 pounds I believe check your local state and or blah 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 legal mumble jumble. Yeah. Uh, so another, just another check another your thing local is, stuff too, we had a lot of a lot of issues with um, with guys you know obviously in this industry it's hard to find find people that um, can can back a trailer sometimes um, so we do a lot of work around townhouses, always blocking right. people in. So, um, you know, the guys don't have to worry about backing a trailer. All right, um, so let's let's see how this actually, how well this works. I'm gonna come around to the other side. I wanna watch why it unload and unload. And um, we're gonna watch the truck squat. We're gonna watch how the truck reacts during this process. So you can load the four-wheeler first or the mower first? Yeah, either one. That's why we made this this height here. Um, so for right standards, you don't have to lower the deck or the engine or anything to fit under under your rack in the front. I just love the thought he put into this thing. You just got to appreciate and admire somebody that's like, well, you basically built it for yourself, Wyatt. Pretty much. <laughs> I love that. So it's got a lift assist gate. This gate's actually surprisingly heavy. He looks kind of tough. His wife doesn't look as tough. Can you lift that gate up? Yeah, I can. Can you do it with one hand? Uh, Ooh. probably. Ooh, the challenge is laid down. Oh, you almost grabbed it. I know. Look at that. Okay, so that's an easy gate. So she pretty much goes up, and then you lock it, pin it in place so yeah. you don't we you got know. a little bit of tension on here, so that way it, you know, it, it stays shut with the, the help of the grill lift anyhow, but we have fins on either side okay, to so make that sure is, it stays shut. So that gate's got to probably weigh about 150, 200 pounds by itself, I'm going it, to guess. It does, yeah. yeah. So, um, and another another thing, since uh, since the Instagram post that we had, uh, a lot of people have, have had helpful suggestions. Oh. Um, one thing that... You spoke, he listened. One thing that... Um, you know, we thought about doing, and people can definitely do themselves, is put a um, is put a locking mechanism back here. So you could either drill through this pin and put a lock on here, put another hasp down here, um, so that way your your setup secure. <laughs> our uh, our setup that we run um, every day for our medium sized residential properties uh, between a quarter and half acre. Yeah. Um, we run a 36 inch mower in the front, and then we run a uh, a, a right standard intensity. And then we run a, um, a right ZK 52 inch in the back. Um, for that specific setup, you don't have to do any modifications to the wheel wells. Obviously, only up to a 48 inch mower will fit between the wheel wells of a truck. Okay. If you put the mower in the back though, you don't have to worry about that because you're not quite that far up. Okay. Um, so our, our truck, um, our work truck, we, we have uh, modified the wheel wells. Um, we just actually kind of dented them in on either side about two or three inches mm -hmm. and um, and we can take two 52s if we need to if we're doing a large property at the end of the week okay um, we can load two 52s on and 252 uh, inch mower correct how can people contact you Wyatt so if you go to the ramp rack.com there's a bunch of FAQs there frequently asked questions you can call us at 301-744-9116 okay. um, or you can email us at the ramp rack at gmail don't call at midnight <laughs> Probably wouldn't want to be woke up, would you? That's no different than normal. <laughs> <laughs> Just be respectful of hours of operation, guys, but give these guys a holler. Right, Wyatt's building his business at the Ramp Rat. I saw one picture of this thing and I was like, ooh, I've got to talk to this guy because this is very cool stuff. We've heard people say too that um, they do a lot of stump grinding. Um, we personally uh, load tested the, the back end um, with 1,200 pounds, yep. um, but we're in the process of, of getting it engineered, figuring out what the breaking point is. 
so that way um, you know guys can know if they can load their their stump grinders and Toro dingoes and other equipment in the back. Shouldn't shouldn't tell me about that brake test that just starts making my wheels spin. <laughs> We've noticed um, our crew does about 90 yards a week um, with, with a setup just like this. Mm -hmm. And um, we've noticed it saves about two and a half minutes on every yard per guy um, using this setup. Um, that includes, you know, so driving. 80 minutes a week. Through traffic, um, you know, and, two and a half times everything 90. like that. So basically, it's about three and a half hours a okay. week per man hour. Yep. You know, if you guys charge $65 a man hour, that's over $450 of revenue every week that this rack could bring to your business. Um, in the mowing season, that's over 12 grand. So. <laughs> that's good numbers, you know. 